Welcome to the third video in Node.js and Socket.io for beginners. Um, I built a real quick game that I want to just kind of show off exactly how to get Node and Socket.io up and running with a game type situation. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's real simple and before I get into the code or anything, remember I'm not here to teach you JavaScript, I'm here to teach you Node. So I, I wrote things out pretty simple in JavaScript and I'm not really going to go through it a whole lot. Um, uh, you know, I can, I have other JavaScript videos for that. but also, there's a lot of places I could have put functions and, and built a class to make this simpler, but it would only complicate things on the on the on the other side of it. So, just to let you know, the code is simple, but it's the node that that we're looking at, not necessarily JavaScript. So, basically, with this game, um, and if you notice, you hit refresh, um, player joins, and let me just refresh in both so we know we're in. Now, right now, I don't have the server up, so first thing we got to do, start our server, and now refresh and we refresh and when you do you notice now it says player has entered the game so if I was and basically I just made the players have these random numbers instead of worrying about entering in the name and if this guy comes in it says he has entered the game so basically whoever's entering is gonna say that they've entered um, one thing you could add to this later if you wanted to continue this game is to have a list of all players playing or whatever that might be but I didn't want to go that far into it so this game basically there's three numbers one two and three and they're all behind hiding behind a button the first person to find the one is the winner so it randomly chooses the, each game so you hit the start game and if you notice it, say, it says this player has started the game um, and you can't start the game anymore it disables the button if you notice on our server it's actually saying that that player started the game and it sent it out to both players to say hey I started the game the other thing we could, we could probably do is go ahead and put the player name up here but I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about that right now we can do that later um, so first player goes he hits button one he got a two now if you notice it grays out on both sides on the server it sends it to both that 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 person pushed the first button so now the next player the only thing I didn't put put is turns like whose turn it is or whatever like I said I didn't want to go that far into JavaScript I was just kinda of showing the basics here so he hits button three he gets a three so obviously that's there but if you notice it's still sending the data so um, I believe it's this guy's turn so we hit and now he, he found the one so plower player found the one and it shows he wins the game you can hit start again and it starts over um, so bam, he, f he found it right off. He wins the game, and it's just kind of you can go back and forth with this. The important thing is not really the game, because the game, the game is pretty goofy, but it's how Node is working. And to be honest with you, I've never, I didn't even try. I'm going to refresh this. I didn't even try it with um, with three players to see how well, because I, I, don't, I didn't really write it for three players, but we can give it a shot. So let's, uh, let's start the game. Um, so it, that's all the way across. It starts it. So I guess you could play because um, the button, yep. So you could actually play with as many players as you want, and it'll just keep adding the player. And if we want to add, let me go ahead and uh, refresh these real quick. You would not have to refresh these. I'm, and I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm just doing it just to, just to be sure. But um, and if you notice, it says he's entered the game. And so let's have let's have this guy start the game, and you'll notice it starts for everybody. So it doesn't matter how many clients you have; it's going to run across them all. Um, and I can just show you. We can throw in another player here, and it, it says he's entered the game. So I mean, you can just keep going and keep going as long as you start it. Um, you can play again, and bam. So yeah, the the amount of players you can just keep building and building and have as many players as you want on that side of it but we don't need that many so we're gonna go back to our original few so how did how how, how does this work let's let's start with that um, our let's start with our index um, we start with first thing I do is I just kinda make a the, the random player ID it's just JavaScript I'm just making a random number between 9999 and I'm attaching it to the word player name just or the word player and, and putting it in a variable player name um, <clears throat> these are just two functions we'll get to in a minute. The first thing we want to do is we socket.emit. So we, we call to the to the server, client connects, and then we send the player name. So if we go to our server, the socket.on client connects sends pushes pushes the player name into the or passes the into the very into the arguments and then it broadcast.emit. Now notice I did a broadcast.emit to where it sends to everybody but the original client and it sends new player player name 
So if we go to our new player, we pass in the name, and then all I've all I've done is I added a div tag down here, this text, and the inner. I just made the inner HTML name plus has entered the game. If we were to come in here and change this to socket dot emit, it would only go to the player, the original player. But let's let's actually change this to whoops io io dot sockets dot emit and you'll notice it now it, it will actually go to the to the also to the player who joined um, let's, you have to restart the server since we changed the app.bat or app.js I'm sorry you refresh it you notice how now it sends to both of them but I didn't want to do that because that's you know the course that player already knows the only thing you'd want to do is probably put the origin this player's name up here and he would know but as much as you refresh it's going to continue to do that um, so just kind of give you an idea if you wanted to send all the players that's how you would do it. I'm going to control Z this and bring it back to where we were. Okay so the next is our, well let's go back to our index. So that gets started um, the new player uh, that came in, we, we connected, okay so now the game is just sitting where it is here which is just waiting for somebody to hit the start button. When we hit the start button it you know, says he started the game. Well what happens? So we come down here to our HTML and we have our buttons that I just made a simple button and all I did was did when they clicked submit name this form and I send the form into submit name. I'll get to that in a minute. But the one we just hit, the, the game start. I just made a form called game start. Just put a button in there. It's named game start. The value is just start game. On click, it, it runs the function inside the um, inside this this file, the index start game this dot dot form. So we come up here to start game. Right here, it run this function. It it's it's passing in the form. Um, I made I just named a variable button and form and named it the form dot name which will be button one or button two or button three or actually this one won't but um, and technically we don't even really need that right there I kind of carried it from up here but we do a socket dot emit start game and then the we send the player name and then we just do form dot game start dot disabled dot true and I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that out of there it's not even needed <clears throat> so this per pretty much takes the button and makes it fall makes it hidden to where nobody else can hit it or not really hidden but grayed out to where you can't press it. This sends to the server start game and the player name. So we go back to app. We go up here to our start game. Um, it calls on this. It sends in the player name. We do a game numbers dot sort. What I've done is I built an array <coughs> called game numbers that's one two and three. Uh, I mean it's yes yeah, it's just basically one two and three. It stores those in there. And then I do a sort for every time we hit the star game, it resorts those. So this ar this array starts out the very first time as one, two, and three when the server started, but as it gets sorted every time you hit the star button, so that way it randomizes it. And I just did a randomization here. Don't worry so much about that. That's just just more of JavaScript. Um, but that's what it's doing. It's actually just just sorting the numbers. Then I do a sockets dot emit. So to everybody I want to send the game started and this is the person who sent it so if we go to game started back on our end back on our client we can right here <coughs> game started now this could be turned into a function this can be done easier but like I said I'm not going running through I'm not really doing this for JavaScript I'm more doing this for the the node side of it so what I did is just real quickly made sure everything was uh, was enabled in other words disabled equals false and made sure all the buttons went back to the button one button two button three because if you didn't they would just stay one two or three on there um, and then I just changed that uh, this text div the inner HTML to whoever the name which I passed in started the game so now the game started so once the game started we hit button we hit whatever button we're looking for and which is <clears throat> which ends up being button two so what that does is when we if we come back down here it's just like what, what I did down here except for it's they're called buttons on click submit name this dot form if we come up to our function we have submit name form and it just pretty much captures the name of the button and then passes that name and the player name to send button to the server um, real simple HTML and JavaScript um, and I'm, I'm assuming because you're watching a node tutorial you already know HTML and JavaScript so I'm not going to spend all day on that so we have our send button here. This is what the server calls. It's 
sending the data in the player name. If data equals the button 1, then this button equals the game number 0. So whatever's stored in that array, because remember it randomizes. If it's 2, it, store, it stores the second one. 3, it stores the third one. Remember, these are not true numbers. These are just the, 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 the locations in the array that's storing that number. And then if this button equals 1, because that means you win, then did win equals 1. Um, then we want to omit what button was pushed. Um, so we pull, we call a get button, the date we send the data, um, and then this button. If this button equals one, then we want to admit that there's a, that the player won. So if we come back to our index and we look at our get button, you'll notice it's bringing in the data. This button, if data equals button one, then button one equals this button. Um, and then to say we want to disable it equals true so the value so that's how I'm getting the value is from this button so in other words I'm sending I'm sending in the data of, of the button that they pushed and then I'm, I'm pushing it back to the client so so that way the other client knows what button was pushed then I'm sending in what number actually was behind that button and then putting it displaying that button under the value of that button in the form so all I'm doing is kind of I'm manipulating the form with whatever's coming back from the server. Pretty simple stuff. Um, and then I'm disabling that button. So that's what's happened with these two buttons. Is when I push one, it just manip the server manipulates the client's buttons, whatever it sends back. So it just says, hey, this is the button he pushed. And we go to our button one, and it says he wins the game. And that was just basically if um, we, we called on the winner function which is game st I did game start got, dot game start disabled equals false I want to re-enable the game start because the game is over then I just want to change the inner HTML to who found it and wins the game so if you notice this is actually quite simple all I'm doing is I'm at the server is asking the client to call on functions is all it's really doing it's if it, it's just sending back and forth hey call this function will you call this function will you call this function and and that's how it's all built up from there and it, it's all up to you on how you want to build those functions, how much you want to be ran on server side, how much you want to be ran on client side. Because um, a lot of this stuff can be, if you notice, I did all the randomization on the server. to So that way, I mean, technically you could do it on the client whenever you hit the start button and then have that client send that data to the server. But then that's very unsecure because then the original client who's doing it could actually manipulate that data before it gets to the server. Because it's done on the server, it can't really be manipulated. And so it's it's a little more secure.